that's really important to think about in terms of just community impact in general. I think, you know, if, I'm sure you guys are aware, but there's so many nonprofits, there's so many churches, there's ways that we've kind of taught ourselves to help others or to serve other people, and it's through organizations. But at the end of the day, organizations are just tools that allow people to help people. Um, and that's a really important thing, I think, to, to consider. And then um, the other thing, if you guys heard about maybe, was there's just the uh, huge push to raise funds. Um, so nobody really knew what the needs uh, were going to be and how long people might be out of work or um, think about um, you know, people with smaller kids who both parents work or maybe that's a single parent family. Um, and now childcare is, is not an option because school is not in session. You know, so job loss was a big thing and people just didn't know, you know what was really gonna be needed. So um, some community leaders kind of got together with foundations and larger corporations and their leaders and just kind of said, let's try to raise some money so that we can respond to needs. Um, and so I think the number is 5.1 million that was raised through the Greater Evansville Response Fund. Um, they did a little bit of advertising, but mostly it was just people calling each other and saying, hey, will you, will you kind of give towards this? And so now we're um, actively passing that money out to um, organizations that apply for it. Um, so I get to serve on the advisory committee for that group. There's about 25 of us. It represents five counties. Um, so Gibson, Posey, um, Spencer, Warwick, and Vanderburg are all represented there. And uh, essentially, we, we had the first nine months or so all focused on relief work. Relief work you can think of as like a Band-Aid. Um, it's like this has to be addressed right now. Um, and so we need uh, more funds for food. You know, we want to put boxes together for people to come and receive food who can't afford it anymore, or just maybe they can't even access it, whatever the reason is. Uh, or maybe it's, uh, we want to fund as many organizations helping with financial assistance. You know, people who are saying, I can't, I can't meet my rent, or I can't pay my utility bill, or I can't find transportation, I need help with that. Um, the idea was to have a safety net in place that was a little bigger than we typically do in our community. Uh, in order to keep people uh, stable and moving towards uh, self-sustainability and not falling into poverty, um, or those who are there um, being able to help and respond. And then just at the beginning of this year, uh, we really started to focus more on recovery and restoration. And recovery and restoration are more focused on uh, kind of getting things back up and running operationally, but also the restoration part of it is exciting. It's sort of what's the new future we really want to build? If we could think about, you know, the kind of Evansville we want to live in, uh, what would that have? And so if organizations had to be 501c3s, have a vision for what that looks like and a plan, they can apply for those funds. And uh, there's a, actually an allocations team that makes decisions and recommendations to the advisory committee. And those allocations committee members are sort of, you know, been in the nonprofit space a long time, understand the needs of our community well and ask good questions and make sure all the uh, all those donations go out into the community um, in a positive way in a way that makes an impact um, so those were like the two that i had in mind that i wanted to share with you guys um, that i've had a chance to see there's some other things i could talk about but i also want to make sure we have time for questions and i if i have more time to talk i can share another example but i'm open to what you guys would like to do to do Beck, do you want to facilitate questions or, or do you want Ross to keep going? Are there any questions um, from members? If you guys want to pop in the chat, um, maybe um, put that in. Um, oh, while you guys do that, I could tell you about one more. Yeah. Um, so think of what questions you'd like to know and I'll do my best to give you some answers. Um, but I um, want to tell you about something we started at Fort Evansville, like just that first week that things shut down was something called the ground game. And we thought we really wanted to understand uh, the needs of like what people were really experiencing um, in our city because we were all isolated and we didn't know what to expect. Um, so I just uh, organized a Zoom call like this every 
actually we did it for an hour monday wednesday friday for like five months straight and it was um, organizations that are doing community development work so people who are very neighborhood focused resident focused resident led uh, initiatives so we had memorial community um, development corporation community one um, potter's wheel youth first the dream center and um that was kind of like our core team. And then throughout those ground game calls, we had invited the EVSC and probably like 20 other organizations or church leaders that would just help us understand like, what are people experiencing right now? Like, what are, what are the needs? Where can, where can help be given? What should we plan for? Um, one question uh, that came up that uh, is kind of interesting is we had some EVSC leadership on at one point and we had uh, kind of uncovered the reality of Wi-Fi access not not being widely available necessarily um, and so we kind of just said what could we do about that we had somebody from a local church that developed a Wi-Fi hotspot map just using Google to say here's where the hot here's where some hotspots are you could you know, if you're in this neighborhood, you could pull up to this store and use their, their Wi-Fi, they said. Um, and that also encouraged the EVSC to really look into it. And they came up with some of their own strategies about mobile vehicles that have Wi-Fi access points that they can drive around and make sure people, you know, students can do work. Um, so that's just one example of just like finding the needs and then figuring out a creative solution, but doing that together um, as nonprofit leaders, that was just a really cool experience. And we actually are continuing the ground game call once a week. Um, and that's, that's really good. So, um, Becca, I'll let you pick your questions, uh, and I'll, I'll try not to read all of them. <laughs> so, so um, feel free to throw them out. Yeah. We've got a few, uh, questions that, um, are kind of asking about how, um, we can volunteer um, for your specific organization or how youth um, can get involved with for Evansville? That is a really awesome question. So we're a pretty small nonprofit um, and we don't, we, we're positioned as an intermediary organization. So what we like to say is we bring people together to solve our city's most pressing needs, but we are not identifying a specific need that we will solve. Uh, as an organization on our own. So if you were to visit our website, you'd find a place on the site called Collaboratives. And our hope is to uh, either find and identify and put collaboratives, like people who are working together to solve a need um, on our website, or even foster and develop those collaborative opportunities. So there's a few on our site right now, and I hope in the next month, there'll be a few more. Um, but our hope is for someone that wants to get involved and sort of be for Evansville. Like that's the idea. We don't want you just to live in Evansville. We want you to be for Evansville. And we think that when more people are for Evansville, more people realize that Evansville could be a place for everyone. Um, so anyways, if you were to go there, like if you were to pick the foster care um, coalition or the house, um, which is housing organizations kind of working together um, our hope is to just connect you with a person who's sort of an expert in that area, um, has been working on that need. Maybe they lead a nonprofit uh, that's focused on it, or maybe they are part of the DCS system in the foster care uh, situation. And our hope would be to connect you with a person that you could like have a phone call with or a Zoom call or in the future grab coffee with and just say, hey, I'm really passionate about housing. I learned about all the different stuff going on sort of on the For Evansville website or wherever, um, but I want to do something about it. And here's what I think I am passionate about. I'd like to just like build houses. You know, that person might be able to say, well, you need to connect with Habitat and they could actually make the connection for you. Um, or they, or you might say, you know, I'm, I'm interested in getting into banking one day. Like how does that intersect with housing? And they could connect you with, you know, somebody at Old National who's thinking about those questions. So that's kind of the idea um, of what Fort Evansville is about. So we're not specifically looking for like a lot of volunteers at Fort Evansville, uh, but we want to point people to uh, the right places where you could jump in, where you're passionate and you could find kind of your tribe of people that care about that, that you could work together with. I love that. Um, and if you guys are catching it, Berg is sending um, links that Ross is referencing um, in the Zoom chat. So if anything 
kind of sparks your interest, be sure to click that link. Um, we have a good question here. Um, since you've been so close to the pandemic response, um, what do you anticipate will be the major challenges as we navigate um, this coming spring and summer? Um, that's that's a great question. I, I think the, the biggest one that I hear from leaders is sort of the, the mental health aspect of re kind of recovering from this traumatic year. And it's not just the pandemic, as you guys know, there's a lot going on in our country. And, you know, we, we got to learn how to talk to one another. We got to learn how to care for one another's, um, you know, well-being. And some of that's been like, we've been distanced. And so we've maybe forgotten a little bit of that. And we've been connecting on Zoom. That's a little different than connecting in person. And I think what I'm, what I'm hopeful for and sort of the next phase is just like re-entering relationships um, in, a, in an intentional way, like making that such a priority. Um, I think that's really, really important. And as we have more opportunities to go out to restaurants and feel like we can talk to everybody there or, you know, in school, maybe you feel more freedom to, you know, just spend time together, like just caring for one another more, sort of that neighbors, caring for neighbors idea. Um, I think there's a lot that we'll be processing for a few years in terms of like, how did this affect us and how has it changed us? And so kind of as we enter into this, you know, hoped for state of people being vaccinated, you know, and being able to sort of have some movement back towards what we knew in terms of community and friendship um, and how we did those. I think that will be a huge, huge deal. Uh, but in terms of like physical needs, you know, I, I think it's a huge focus on really establishing the right kind of systems. Um, I'm excited about that. Like it's kind of given everybody a chance to pause and say like, what's the new future we really want? You know, what did the pandemic bring to light that we kind of knew was there, but we saw it more clearly and we don't want that in our community anymore. Like we want to solve that problem. Um, I think it's just a ton of opportunity for that. Um, and, I, and I hope too, that there's kind of a sense that we're all in this together and it's going to take all of us working together to uh, really create that kind of community. Awesome. Um, what made you want to make uh, philanthropy and bettering the Evansville community um, your full-time job? Um, I have a unique story about that. Um, I was running a nonprofit in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I have roots here in Evansville. I finished uh, high school actually at Castle, um, but grew up in Indianapolis. But I was sort of doing my dream job in my dream city in Charlotte and very happy doing it. And I got a call from a business owner in Evansville who I literally had met once. And uh, he was just sort of led, I guess you could say, to call me and ask me to consider doing what I'm doing now. But uh, it wasn't articulated the way that we articulate it now. It was just this idea of how could we help people work together in our community? How do we bring the leaders together? Um, you know, we were thinking about churches and how there's so many churches and they have a hard time working together, but they have, but then that's kind of true of all of our different areas. There's a lot of different silos and how could we have better collaboration, better relationships? And he just was convinced that we needed somebody to wake up every day thinking about that question, uh, not running a church, not running a nonprofit, not running whatever. So I actually never wanted to start a nonprofit, but you can't raise money without being a nonprofit. So um, I did have to do that eventually. Um, but the passion for it is really about, you know, I, I deeply uh, believe in the Christian story. And so I'm convinced that God has uh, a beautiful way that life is to be lived. Um, and I think people express it differently, um, but I think there's something in us that says we, we want to be in a place where we belong. We want to have purpose. Uh, we want to live in a community that's increasingly uh, a better place to live. And so uh, that's just something I wanted to pursue with my time and felt like I could put my education, my experience, my skills to work in this way. And so that was part of it. And then something that I never really considered when I was in high school was being like a a starter, um, but starting a nonprofit is, you know, very entrepreneurial. It's exciting. It's very hard. It's, it's, but that, that's kind of a cool part of it too. 
um, that, you know, just getting to start something in that way. Um, go ahead, Becca. Oh, okay. Um, in the grand scheme of this pandemic, where does um, Evansville fall on the scale of impact and how have we been fortunate? Um, are there areas we've really struggled in? Um, and were there areas that we did better um, compared to other communities? Oh, that's good. I would say one thing I've been thinking about that I'm really glad about in Evansville is our commitment to staying in school. Um, not every city is doing that. Not every community is doing that. I'm really proud of the way the EVSC has handled that. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but you know, like if we were in New York, like we still wouldn't be in school, you know, like it would be, I just think that's so challenging. Um, so I think it's, you know, given that we're a smaller community, I think we've done a lot of, of good work to put in the right steps, the right procedures to make it possible for people to stay in school and that is a stability factor for families as well like that allows more people to go to work um, as well so that's really a, a good thing and i think in terms of like raising five million dollars and compare it like if we were to just relatively scale that to what indianapolis has done you know we've we've technically done a little bit more um, and i think that's true compared to other you know peer cities around the country um, so that's a really neat thing. Um, and then I would say just Evansville has a little bit of a resiliency factor that I think is something that we can celebrate. Um, we're a city that, you know, has taken on challenging times before. And um, we've kind of come together to do that, whether it's like the 1937 flood or it's um, what we did in the World War II or what we did in response to large manufacturers leaving the area. Like Evansville has a resiliency uh, history that's important um, and I would encourage you to d dive into it more but even in the great recession you know there was a there was kind of a coming togetherness of we'll get through it and I think that's true of Evansville today still um, uh, for Evansville references um, centered set philosophy um, can you kind of define that for the group um, yeah Oh, I love that question. Good. So um, centered set is compared to a bounded set. So a bounded set is it's like in the, in the context of like, let's work together. A bounded set says, if you think like me, you're in my bounded set, you're in my circle. Um, if you believe like I believe, you're in my circle. If you vote the way that I vote, you're in my circle. If you look the way that I look, you're in my circle. And therefore I can work with you or I have trust with you that's that's a bounded set and you guys see bounded sets throughout our culture all the time a centered set says do you care about what i care about so do you do you care about making sure people aren't hungry in evansville do you care about racial unity in evansville do you care about um, child welfare or housing or whatever the issue might be. If you care about that thing, it doesn't really matter what you believe, what you think, what you look like, what your philosophy for tackling it is. Um, we start with that commitment that we both care about this thing, so let's work together. And so the idea is, even in our logo, it's kind of these hands that are working together, pointing towards the center. It's let's work together to solve this because we all care about that thing. And the fruit of that is, is beautiful. Um, so that centered set philosophy is really what we mean when we say collaboratives. Um, and that's a, that's a core um, conviction of our organization and something that we have uh, educated, I guess you could say, many church leaders on, many nonprofit leaders just around this concept. And I think it resonates uh, really well uh, with why we're seeing more people collaborate um, and have a language for expressing that. looks like we only have time for just one more question um, because we do have to get to committees. Um, but we'll end with, um, okay. as of now, uh, besides COVID looking forward, um, what are some of Evansville's most pressing needs um, and problems that need to be addressed? Good question. So we actually did a um, state of e-report um, about a year and a half ago. So I'd like to do it every couple of years, but we wanted to determine like, what are the three to five things that are like really things we have to focus on in order to be the community we want to be. 
So uh, we've hit a little bit of them in just talking, um, but we had five of them. Housing stability, uh, racial unity, mental wellness, child welfare, and economic capacity. And so you could you can actually go on the website and learn about any of those five areas. Um, and we are uh, currently um, updating the website as well. We, we do some short films and some of our short films will be in those areas. Like if you wanna learn about racial unity, we produced a film called Left Turn 2 um, that kind of helps people just talk about that conversation together, uh, raise questions and share experiences. Um, so that's, and then you can also learn about like, how does, what does racial injustice look like in Evansville? Um, we're doing a podcast that launches February 1st on that specific topic. Um, we're gonna have two episodes a month, just learning about a key issue. Um, we're convinced if we can help our community know what some of the key issues are. Um, that's kind of step one, listening. Um, if you guys are studying design thinking at all, like that's kind of the step one is, is listen. You know, that's how, before you just do anything, the first thing is to listen. Awesome. Um, well, thank you so much, Ross. We really appreciate, appreciate you taking the time um, to join us this morning. We know our meetings are early. Um, yeah, that's great. If any um, TAC members or exec members have any more questions um, for Ross, send them to your co-chairs, send them in the chat real fast, um, and we'll make sure uh, we can pass those on. Maybe we'll be able to get an answer um, from Ross, hopefully. Um, and then, uh, yeah, uh, there's a bunch of thank yous in the chat. Um, so yeah, we're just super appreciative um, of you being here. Yeah, I'm gonna, th I'm gonna throw my email in the chat. And if you guys, I didn't get to your question, I really would love to hear from you and I'll do my best to respond. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really a pleasure to be with you guys. And it's really cool that you guys are up doing this and focusing on the community and growing together. Awesome. Um, so we're gonna break into committees now. Um, you can find your committee links, um, weekly reminder, um, hopefully in your group meet. Um, thank you again, Ross.